Hey guys, welcome back. If you're watching this video, it's because you're wanting to prep for algebra. Maybe you're going to be going into algebra next year and you want to get a good refresh. Uh, I love algebra, but it's a lot easier if you have a rock solid foundation. So what we're going to talk about today is our second lesson, converting decimals and fractions. Converting decimals and fractions. So this is, I love these because once you see the pattern and you get used to this, it becomes really easy. Uh, we're going to start first by talking about how do we get a decimal into a fraction, a decimal into a fraction. Here's the great news. All we do is we take that decimal point and we look and see what is going to make it a whole number. Well, if we go over one, two spots, that's going to be 23 over one with two zeros because we moved it two spots. Same with this guy, one, two. So it's going to be 43 over one, one, two zeros. Okay, now that seems easy peasy enough, right? However, sometimes we have to reduce those fractions. So look at this guy, we would get, I'm gonna, I didn't leave myself a whole lot of room here, so I'm gonna write up here, 25 over 100. Well, 25, if you think about quarters, if I divide the top by 25 and the bottom by 25, what I end up with, that's that least common, or that um, greatest common factor is 25 for both of those, I end up with, one over four. So just make sure when you're turning things from a decimal into a fraction that you uh, make sure to reduce your fraction, okay? That's only the partially the right answer. You gotta reduce that fraction, okay? Let's look at this 30, 0 0.30. I've thrown a zero in here, but remember zeros are not necessary at the end of your decimals, like at, um, on the other side of the decimals. So it's just 0 0.3. How would we write that as a fraction? Let's get rid of that extra zero and see, we only move this over one spot. So it's gonna be three over one and then just one zero because we only moved it over one spot. This can be tricky though, 0.3 and 0 0.03. And now if you're saying these out loud correctly, which I have not been doing and I should be doing, this is three tenths. If you say it out loud correctly, it does the fraction for you. This is three hundredths. Remember, tenths, hundredths, thousandths. So three hundredths would be three over 100. In case you can't remember that, we can see that we move it one, two spots. So we give it one, two zeros. Okay. Same over here. We get 88 over 100. Okay. Well, I know that those are both even, so let's, let's reduce those. So I get 44 out of 50. Reduce that again, I get 22 out of 25. And by reduce, all I'm doing is dividing the top and bottom by two each time until I get to my most reduced fraction. 95 hundredths, 95 over 100. Now, if I divide this by five, I don't remember what I get. I don't know what happened to my calculator. I should probably do these before I go making this video. But it looks like I get 19. Divide this by five and I get 20. So 95 hundredths would be 19 twentieths. Uh, 75, 0.75 is 75 hundredths. Now, I love it when it's 75, 50, and 25 because those are just like quarters. And if you have 75 cents, you have three out of four quarters. Remember, fractions are all, fractions are just part of the whole thing, part over whole. That's all a fraction is. Um, okay, these are some good ones that you're going to want to memorize. If you have 0.3, it would be 3 tenths. If you have 0.3 with a line over it, it's 3 over, and instead of 10, now we're going to use 9. Same for this thing, 6 tenths. If this did not have a line over it, meaning that it's repeating, it would be 6 tenths, and of course we would reduce that. However, this has a line repeating, so it's going to be 6 over 9. Now, for both of these things, I can reduce them. Divide the top and bottom by 3. Divide by three, divide by three, I get one third. Divide by three, divide by three, I get two thirds. These are ones that you're gonna wanna memorize. 0.3 with a line over it, repeating is one third. 0.6 that doesn't stop, that's two thirds. Those ones are important in addition to your quarters, your 25, 50, 75. Like right here, now I have a mixed number here. It's gonna be two and five, tenths, because it's five tenths, we move it one time, five over 10. Of course, we want to reduce this fraction, divide the top and bottom by five, and I end up with two and one half, two and one half. Same thing over here, this is going to be five and eight tenths, but I want to reduce my fraction, so I'm going to divide by two, divide by two, I end up with five and 
four fifths, five and four fifths. Now over here, this sometimes happens where you get one that's pretty big. Look at this, one, two, three spots until I get a whole number. That means I'm gonna do seven over one, one, two, three, zero, seven thousandths. And if you were saying that out loud, that's exactly what it is, seven thousandths. Uh, this one right here is gonna be one and 345 over uh, one, I had to move this over one, two, three spots. So one, two, three zeros. Let's try dividing that. I forgot to do this before I uh, started recording. So I get 69 over one zero, 1,000 divided by, what did I divide by? Divide by, oh, by five. That was 200. I don't know why I had to look that up. Whatever. So one and 6,900. Now I know 69, uh, three goes into it uh, because six plus nine is 15 and three goes into 15. So three is going to go into this number. However, two plus zero plus zero is two and three does not go into two. So it's not going to go into this. So that is my final answer right there. All right, let's talk about fraction two decimal. I love it when it's over 100 like this because it's just 23 hundredths. This guy right here, 37 hundredths. This thing right here, remember we can reduce this fraction. Let's lob off some zeros. This is just going to be three tenths because there's only one zero on the bottom. Now over here, this is going to be three hundredths, which means we have to have a placeholder. Do you see the difference between that and that guy? Common mistake. So make sure you pay attention to that. Now, what about if your fraction ends in something easy? And what I, what I mean by that is, let's talk about 100. Our, our uh, factors of 100 are 1 times 100, 2 times 50, 4 times 25, 5 times 20, and 10 times 10. If your fraction ends in one of these numbers, you are lucky because this is what happens. Let's turn this into a ratio. And a ratio is just comparing two fractions. I'm sorry, into a proportion and a proportion is just comparing two ratios and all a ratio is is a fraction. So we're comparing two fractions here. What do I need to multiply four by to get 100? I would say 25. Again, think back to those quarters. If I do it on the bottom, let's do it on the top. And so three fourths is three times 25 is 75. Three fourths is 75 one hundredths, which means 0.75. Bam. Let's talk, let's try that again with this five because that five is one of our beautiful factors of uh, 100. So if I put this over 100, I get times 20 times 20, I end up with uh, 40 over 100. Now I can make this easier and I could say 0.40, like that 40 hundredths, but remember those excess zeros aren't necessary. I can lob those zeros off and I say, four tenths. That would be a much better answer. Four tenths. Um, the extra zero is not wrong, but it's less right. Now, of course, that's not always easy where it ends in, a, in something that is a factor of 100. Sometimes we get things like this. So this is when we have to do the long work. So it's nice when it's under over 100 or a factor of 100, but when we have to do the long work, this is on top of the table. So I'm going to put it under my table. Now, I'm going to put a decimal here and a decimal here, and I need to, eight does not go into one, but it will go into 10, okay? So eight to 10, that's gonna be two, or oh, that's gonna be one time. I don't know why I wrote two. One times eight is eight, minus this we get two. When we subtract, we also bring down, so basically we're doing our long division. How many times does eight go into 20 without going over? That time it's gonna be two, we get 16. Minus that, we get four. We gotta bring down another zero. Do you see I'm just adding some zeros on here? Eight divided by 40, or I'm sorry, eight goes into 45 times, and that gives me no remainders, so I am good to go. So one eighth is 125 thousandths, or 0.125. What about something like this? One, 500, ugh, 500 divided by one, put my, Go ahead and put my decimal down. Well, five does, 500 does not go into one. It doesn't go into 10, doesn't go into 100. It does go into 1,000 though. So if we do uh, zero, zero, because it's not going into one, it's not going, you can put a zero above the one if you'd like to. I always forget to put my zeros in front of my decimals. You don't really have to, um, but you can. So I've got a zero holding all those places because it doesn't go in. And it's not until I get to 1,000 that I say, oh, Two. Two times 500 would give me 1,000 with no remainders. So this is going to be 0 0.002 or two thousandths. 
What about if I have a mixed number here? All you've got to do is disregard that three for, for the time being and deal with that four over five. Five, again, is a factor of a 100, so let's just deal with the five here. I need to multiply five by 20 to get 100, so I'm gonna do it on the top and the bottom, and I get 80. Beautiful. Well, I can lob those zeros off, so I get eight tenths. This is where the three comes back into play. Three and, remember your decimal is and, eight tenths. Three and eight tenths. All right, guys, let's see about some other ones. What about three divided by seven? All right, so that one takes a little bit of space, so I'm gonna move that down here. Three over seven, that's gonna be three under the table seven on top of the table. All right, so what we do here is if we've got, uh, just curious, okay, so uh, three, seven goes into 34 uh, times, so I'm gonna put this up here, and then I get 28, when I minus that I get two, I bring down a zero, seven goes into that two times, that gives me 14, I get a six, I bring down another zero, Seven goes into 68 times. So eight times seven, we get 56, right? And then I get four and I bring down a zero. Oh my goodness, this is gonna keep going on forever. When this happens, just round it to your nearest thousandth, which means we should do one more to make sure. Seven goes into 45 times, right? Seven times five is 35. And then we end up with five, bring down another zero, seven goes into 57 times, blah, blah, blah. It's gonna keep going on. It actually does repeat, but at this point when something like this happens, I would round it to the nearest mm, thousand, hundredth or thousandth, one of these two. So if we're gonna round this to the nearest, uh, let's just say the nearest thousandth, is that gonna stay eight or is it gonna go up? Well, we look to the one next to it, it's a five, so it's gonna get boosted up. So it's gonna be, 429 thousandths. Same with if I round to the nearest hundredth, that's gonna be 0.43 because uh, looking at this, is it gonna stay a two or get boosted up? When we look here, eight, that's greater than, it's five or greater, so we boost it up to a three, so it's uh, 43 hundredths. Um, okay, so that, that was three over seven. Uh, four and one half, this is a good one to remember. Your one half is 0.5, just, just memorize that. Memorize that and so, uh, two, or I'm sorry, uh, one fourth is 0.25, like if you had one out of four quarters, two fourths, AKA one half is 0.5. And then three fourths, if you had three out of four quarters is 75 cents. Those are good one to memorize. Okay. Just, just like this one is too. If we do this guy, we get two downstairs, three upstairs. I put a zero put a decimal, three goes into 26 times, six times three is, tw is 18, two, I bring down another zero, three goes into 26 times, I get uh, 18, I, uh, whoop, 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 whoop. that should be a two, bring down another zero, three goes into 26 times, you catch it on, this is gonna keep repeating, right? So uh, the way that we would write this is 0.6 with a line over it, no, oh, I guess I don't wanna use the about because that's actually more accurate. So 0.6 with a line over it. Uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, and then 13 divided by 30, we've got 13 downstairs, 33 upstairs. So if we've got, uh, oops. Okay, so how many times does 33 go into 130? Oops, I uh, forgot my decimal. Bam, bam, before I added that zero. Oof. Uh, 33 goes in, we're gonna do three times. So three times 33. Go, gives me uh, 99, so that's gonna give me 31. Let's do a zero. How many times does 33 go into 310? You could sit here and off to the side and do that, but it happens to be nine times. That's why I was looking at my calculator, so you don't have to sit here and watch me do that. Nine times 33 uh, is 297, which gives me 13, which means I bring down another zero, which means it's 30, which means it's three. Three times that is 99, which means I get 310 so because I'm bringing down a zero for that last one. 31 with a zero and so on and so forth. You can see that this starts to repeat 0 0.39, 0 0.39, or 0 0.39, 39, 39. The way that we write that is 39 hundredths repeating, just like that. Make sure when you write that, you don't wanna write 0.39 with a line over the nine because what that is saying is 
uh, 0.3999, right? And that's not what you want, okay? All right, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, I will get around to putting a worksheet down below so that you can kind of practice those with those answers. If you have any questions, like I said, let me know. You can leave me a message. You can um, you can send me a text, email, whatever you need to do. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you found this helpful. Thanks, guys.